All right, next video, the backspin power pitch. This is the main pitch, guys. If you're going to learn any of the four pitches in this series, this is the one you need to have under your belt. This one combined with the next pitch, the knuckleball, you can dominate games with them. So stay tuned. All right, in this video, we're going to talk about the backspin straight pitch. Now, I call it a backspin power pitch. Why do I call it that? Well, it's not because you throw the pitch hard, because you can't throw the pitch hard. You can only throw it maybe 30 miles an hour, or they'll call you illegal, and it has to have so much art to it as well. So what I mean by power is that you're going to throw this pitch, once you develop it properly, with a high backspin rate. Now that high backspin rate gives you a couple of advantages. First of all, the ball drops more steeply from the top of the arc down into that hitting zone. That gives you a, an angle advantage because that's a little more difficult to square up on for the batter when it comes in at a steep angle. And this has been proven by uh, studies and, and experiments done at the University of Alberta where they actually, they actually took slow pitch softball pitchers, they did video analysis, all kinds of stuff, and it's true, it drops at a steeper angle than a forward spin pitch. The second, and I think this is where you have the greater advantage, is with a high backspin, that ball will deflect off of the bat downward. If you've ever played table tennis or tennis and put a good backspin on a ball and watch your opponent hit that ball into the net, it's the same principle. I'll demonstrate this a little bit later in the video along with the arc advantage. I'll show you that as well. The other thing I want to say about this pitch, if you pair this up with the knuckleball, and that's the subject of our next video, you can absolutely dominate teams. So let's move on with the grip for the slow pitch, power pitch, backspin pitch. So here's the grip. You take your index finger and your middle finger, you go as far apart as you can on the seams, put your thumb on the seam on the back. Make sure your pads are right on that seam because it's going to give you the best grip. And the wide grip causes your fingers to be close to the axis of rotation, which is going to give you a higher spin rate. If you haven't seen my series on power pitching, check the link here, and I'll explain it all to you. But that's the grip for the high spin rate backspin pitch. Okay, now that you have the grip, let's move on to a slow motion analysis of the pitch. All right, let's play it once through without comment. All right, if you notice, I have the grip set in my glove, as in my previous pitches, the slider and screwball. This helps with muscle memory, helps me to establish that proper grip, and I maintain that grip to this point in the windup. Just at my hip, I begin to rotate my wrist back to that 90 degree angle, all the way to the top of the windup. I'm going to break the delivery into two parts, as in my previous videos, from the top of the windup to the point at which I begin to break my wrist from 90 degrees to 0 degrees and then from this point to the point of the ball delivery. So if you go back here just behind the hip is when I begin to turn my wrist from 90 degrees to 0 degrees. It's a short part of the arc imparts a great deal of spin on the ball and then here at release you notice this pinching action with my fingers and my thumb quite a bit of pressure there that along with the quick wrist rotation gives the ball a high spin rate. The spin rate on this pitch is probably about a thousand RPM, maybe a little bit higher. So uh, let's move on to the side view. Let's watch it one time through without comment. All right, now let's take a look. If you notice, my uh, grip is already preset, just as in the slider and in the screwball. And the wrist and hand angle are at zero degrees, and I maintain that angle until a point just past my hip on the windup. Right here, this is when I bring that hand angle up to 90 degrees to the forearm. And then you notice the ball and shoulder are level to the ground. And as in the previous video, we'll break this down into two parts of the arc. The first part is to the point at which I begin to release my wrist angle and I maintain that angle to that point. Then here, just past the hip, I release that angle to zero. 
This is the point at which the ball is released, giving it a good hard spin. Now, if you notice at the release point, that pinching action with my fingers and my thumb, that combined with a quick turn of the wrist gives that ball a high spin rate. That's what makes this pitch effective. Breaking pitches are effective because of their lateral movement. The backspin pitch is effective because it has a high spin rate. Gives you a good steep drop at the end of the pitch, especially with high pitches, and it also gives you a favorable deflection angle off of the bat. Now, as I mentioned before, a ball with a high backspin rate will drop steeper from the high part of the arc than a forward spin pitch. So I did a, an informal comparison here of two pitches, one forward spin and backspin. So let me just show you what I do with my own video. Now, this is not scientific, but it does illustrate the point. All right, here I'm pitching two pitches. The first one is a forward spin pitch, and the second is a backspin pitch. And we're going to look at the trajectory of both pitches and compare them. So I'll go ahead and play We'll play the first. This is the forward spin pitch, and uh, I've marked it right here at the top of the arc. So here, and then there's a mark here at the bottom where it actually hits the ground. That's the forward spin pitch. So let's move on to the back spin pitch, and I'll leave the marks there for reference. I didn't move the camera, so the camera's in the same spot. And there's the top of the arc for the back spin pitch. And as you'll see, it will hit exactly in the same spot. Don't ask me how I did that. I guess, anyway, I was able to pitch two pitches and hit the same spot. Two different pitches. Then I have one more view, and this is a composite view, where I overlaid one over the other. And as you can see, the release point, let me back it up just a bit here. The release, the release angle is almost identical. Both pitches are coming from the same spot. It will go to the top, and here's our top of the arc, and then they come down and hit in the same spot, one after the other. So there you go. You know, this isn't highly scientific. This is just something I did to, to look at it myself. Especially this pitch here is only about maybe 10 feet high, so if you were at the top, maybe the 12, 13 foot range, it would make more of a difference. And you have to remember it's a game of inches. It, it is an old cliche, but it's true. If that ball's coming in there a little bit lower or a little bit higher than they expected, they're either going to hit a pop-up or they're going to roll it over. I think the biggest advantage of a backspin pitch, especially with a high spin rate, is that deflection angle off the bat, as I mentioned before. Now, I've done a couple of diagrams here to illustrate the point, so let's take a look. Here I illustrate what the ball has a tendency to do. With a backspin, it wants to drive or it has a tendency to drive down off of the bat, just like if you put backspin on a tennis ball or a ping pong ball, it wants to go down into the net. Now, with forward spin, it has just the opposite effect. It comes off the bat with backspin, just like a well-hit ball off of a driver or a golf ball, it's going to drive, it's going to carry farther. And the more backspin you have, the more you mitigate this. All right, if you want more instruction on this pitch, check out my series, Slow Pitch Power Pitching. This is the featured pitch in that series. There I cover in more detail the mechanics, the, the drills, all that support material you need to really learn this pitch. I'll leave the link above. Now, a couple of notes about this pitch. You want to keep this pitch at both ends of the extreme. What I mean is, if you can get that six foot or six and a half foot pitch, and, and the umpire will give that to you as a legal pitch. Keep it down there. And you also want to go to the high extreme. You want to pitch this pitch up there at that 12, 13 foot level. Both ends. Don't stay out of the middle. Stay out of the middle because that makes the pitch a little easier to hit. And, and you want to get that nice seesaw effect. Also, you want to keep that pitch right on the back edge of the plate. It's more effective there. Now, when you combine this with the knuckleball, the same thing. You want to keep that knuckleball low and high and we'll talk about that more next week in our uh, final video of this series pitches on the knuckleball I'll talk a little bit more about how to combine the two together but that's the main thing you want to make sure that when you practice and you drill this pitch throw them low throw them high keep them short and they'll be more effective so we'll see you next week